Well, thank you for joining me on the ProBrick exclusive YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to continue my talks on the deeper aspects of the dark side of female nature. It's also connected to the dark side of male nature as well. It's actually the dark side of human nature, to be honest. I'm Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Australia, on the ProBricky channel, otherwise known as ProBricky. Um, this is a bit of a tough one, but it can answer a lot of questions for people that are struggling with relationship issues, particularly with people that are aware of a problem that needs to be fixed, but just can't seem to find a way of doing that. In other words, the unresolved becomes more important than the relationship itself, and that's why the relationship comes to a crushing halt, even though everything seems to appear to be all right on the surface. In Romans chapter 7 and verse 14, after what is probably some of the most profound information on human nature and how it can go evil via religion, um, the Apostle Paul writes, so the trouble is not the law. Now, what you've got to understand as Western people, you are not under the Mosaic law. You are not got anything to do with the Mosaic law. And he says, for it is spiritual and good. The law is good. There's nothing wrong with the contents of the law. The trouble is with us. I'm going to make it personal, for I am all too human a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Now, this is profound. Honestly, it is profound. Because it's a key to what we're up against. Um, verse 15 it is, and I'm going to highlight verse 15. I can't get all of it because it's going to play up, but hang on, I might be able to. I don't really understand myself for what, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. This is something that is happening to millions of people, tens of millions of people right across the world, because there's aspects of our nature that we don't understand about ourselves. When, we, when we're unaware of what's happening within our nature, and this is the, the ignorance of society today, and people aren't really trying to work out what's going on within them, and therefore they're being blindsided by themselves. They don't really understand themselves. They know that they want to do good, but they find themselves doing the opposite. Um, the problem with it is they're the only ones that can't see that what they're doing isn't right. Everybody else can see um, looking from the outside in. But when you look, when you're trying to look from the inside out, you, you cannot too often and more often not be blindsided from the things that are sabotaging you. And you'll hear... Um, People look back and go, I wish I had a known better. Well, they consciously, people do know better. Um, but subconsciously, they're connected to a part of themselves that just does not want them to do better. You can apply this to all different kinds of um, relationship breakdowns. Um, you'll have a woman go into an affair or a man go into an affair and they'll say, I don't know what made me do it. Well, it's sin. They became, a, they chose to be a slave to their sin. It can come down to minor things like a woman with a gambling problem or a man with a gambling problem and they've been asked not to do it and they've promised and they've promised that they won't. This happens with people with addictions. They promise that they won't. I'll never do it again only to find themselves awakening to self-abuse. They've done it again. Um, and they don't really understand what it is. That, see, a lot of people say, well, it's an addiction, it's this and that, but it could also be a sinful nature. 
Your sinful nature wants to take you down. It wants to destroy everything that you've got and do. Now, this underlying bend towards evil, right, is something that you can't see on the surface. In other words, people can look right, they're acting right, um, but underneath there's this bend towards the opposite, I call it opposite directional dysfunction disorder. That's opposite directional dysfunction disorder. If you're with somebody and you're in a relationship with them and they've asked you not to do something, and the next thing you're finding yourself do it, doing it, even though it's going to jeopardise the relationship, what's that called? Well, it's definitely going in, in an opposite direction and it's definitely a dysfunction. Whether or not it's a disorder is another thing. Our sinful nature is a disorder, the nature that works in us. I don't really understand myself for what I want to do. I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. And then, you know, he goes, but if I know what I am doing is wrong, then there's something deeper going on inside. If you're doing something that you know is wrong and you're trying not to do it, then why is that happening? I'll tell you why. Usually when relationships start breaking down, we try and set up rules and things to try and uh, lessen the problem or fix the problem or solve the problem. But what the problem is, if you look at it, where the writer talks about what's causing him to, to trip over, it's trying to keep the law, if you go right into it. Because nobody can keep the law. And when you try and keep the law, or any rule for righteousness, um, outside the spirit of morality, if it's a conscious attempt to try and do something to make somebody happy or stop them from being sad, um, it can cause you to do the opposite. At one time I lived without understanding the law, but when I learned the commandment, I learned not to covet, for instance, the power of sin came to life. See, if you say to somebody, okay, let me use a personal example. Um, your sons don't get along with me. This is from a personal experience. So I'm saying this with wisdom and carefulness. Your sons don't get along with me. Reply, then why don't you fix it? I'll tell you why. You can't fix something you haven't broken. I'm going to say that again. You can't fix something inside somebody that you haven't broken. In other words, if they're broken towards you, they don't like you, they're not going to like you, um, they're just not going to no matter what you do, you can't fix that. That's up to the other person. You can run around and try and um, impress and resolve and all this other stuff, but it ain't going to happen because the other, the, nobody wants it to. It shouldn't have been broken in the first place. If you have a glass cup in your hand and you know it's valuable and you drop it and it smashes on purpose, you can glue it all back together, but the person will drop it again. Do you understand what I mean? If somebody doesn't want resolve, you're not going to get resolve. You're better off just staying away. Now, in my last relationship, this poor woman, or should I say poor woman? This woman wanted to be in a relationship with me. She had adult children that just were difficult to get on with anyway, but didn't like me. I gave her space enough for her to have time to see if knowing me was valuable enough, despite the opposition she would have been facing from her end. I never went to her place just to keep the peace for them. Um, whenever they had a family turnout, I was left out of it, which, oh well, that was up to her to work. See, my tolerance was being tested. And while my tolerance was being tested and I was giving room 
for her to work out what her values were and what she wanted to do, people can become lazy in that, in the sense of, well, you know, it's going this way. I, I'll just go on with his tolerance, hoping that his tolerance will hold, or maybe they even forget that. Well, he's happy with all of this. He's agreeing to all of this. But what they forget is you're hoping, you're not doing it to get something, but you are hoping that over the duration of time, things will be resolved. Because everybody's tolerance does have a limit, let's just be honest. And if you have been in this situation where you've just blown up and got angry, put it behind you, it is what it is, it's happened for a reason. It's not because you're sick or ill or anything like that. You've been pushed as far as you can go, as hard as you've tried, um, and just leave it. It is what it is. Um, but why is it when somebody knows that this could jeopardize this relationship that it doesn't get fixed? There's a multitude of psychological reasons, but the main one is the bend towards the opposite direction. Some people are just never going to be able to come out of that bend. It's like a plane flying in the sky and the controls are broken and it's banking left and it's just going to continue to bank left until there's nowhere else to go. It's descending, it's descending. Smash. It's hard to comprehend that somebody could know something is wrong and needs to be dealt with. And if it just gets dealt with, then at least everybody knows where they stand. And it doesn't get dealt with. How do you perceive the person that's in the middle of all this? How does this person get out of this well the first thing is you don't put yourself in that position in the first place as adults we should be able to know what we need and how we how we are supposed to navigate the behaviors of the people around us um, but sometimes we are blindsided or partial or stood over by or our connection with those people are wrong and we're, we're manipulated and controlled to an extent um, in a way in which it's more valuable, again, to leave the unresolved there than to fix it for everybody, which shows there's a partiality in that person towards the unresolved, which lessens their value for you, whether they're telling you they love you or not. This is how evil works. Evil will work against you. So the object is to find the source of evil, and let's call it what it is, evil, evil. Find the source of evil, work out why it's there. Ask yourself, can it be resolved? Ask yourself, do the people that are doing this want the thing to be resolved? And then ask yourself, is it worth your you staying in that situation where you're on the end of, evil. Nobody wants to be in, on the end of evil. I became a Christian man so that I wouldn't have to be on the end of evil. I don't want nothing to do with evil. I've seen enough evil in my life to last me a lifetime. Haven't you? So you're in the relationship, you want the person to give up drinking, give up drugs, stop gambling, um, Fix this problem with your mother, fix this problem with your sister, um, etc. And nothing's, nothing gets done. Or something is being done in the sense of, we don't want you to go and be with that person. But your partner comes to be with you despite the opposition they've got from family members. Is the objections of the family members towards you valid are they legitimate or we just got 
people running away of themselves, putting evil on well-meaning people for no reason. These are the things you've got to ask yourself because evil will make you think that you're being evil and you're probably not. There are people in the world that want to make life miserable for people because they're miserable themselves. And if you become partial to those people, even if you're related to them, guess what? You go down, you lose. Because good people, people that are trying to get along with everybody and just want to be a part of something and be peaceful, again, how long will they tolerate it for? These are the things that cause relationships to break. So the source of the evil has to be identified. The reason for the evil has to be legitimized or illegitimized. And then the um, extinguishing of the evil has to be attempted. Now, you might be in a situation where you're living with people that are objecting to the partner that you have. But you know that partner is a good person. They don't mean wrong. They're willing to work in with people. Um, they just want to go along. They've had enough evil in their life and everybody be happy. They want what's best for you. How's that person going to go if the people that are closest to them are relentless that they're not going to get along with that person, right or wrong. We just don't want to get along with that person. What are you going to do? Well, you're still going to want to see that person. But if you don't confront the evil, right, it's not up to the other person to confront the evil because that's only going to bring evil on himself. Evil follows those that practice it, the Bible says. If you're seeking for peace, if you're giving the best that you can to your partner under the circumstances that evil is um, blindsiding and wrecking, um, then shouldn't the person that wants to be with you come to the point where this has to be resolved? Not always. And that's why relationships fall. That's why relationships break, because somebody gives in. Somebody goes, I don't want to be connected to this anymore. It's not necessarily your fault, but the trouble that's coming, even if you see, you might not even see these people. But somewhere or another, they're working against you to thwart the relationship you know what i'm talking about you have had this happen to you many of you interferers and troublemakers and all this other stuff and you hang on and then all of a sudden the situation comes up where the issue hasn't been resolved and now it's going to wreck it it's going to wreck something it happens every time it's just a matter of time and this is the underlying innate human nature of us that causes opposite directional dysfunction disorder. And that's just something I call it, but it's actually bending towards the opposite way in which one should go to fix the problem, to resolve the issue. And while somebody is trying to do everything they can to juggle everybody and make them happy, that person's going to crush and burn anyway because they're not confronting the evil. Evil has to be confronted. There are just evil people in the world. They're just not going to be happy with anybody moving forward or getting along. And evil's not to be accepted. You can drug yourself out. You can drink yourself out. You can drink and drug yourself out. You can medicate. You can... Um, psychedelic yourself but if there's evil in that mist take Charles Manson he was this is an extreme case you can get you get mother-in-laws all over the place that are as evil as you can get there's fathers that are evil towards their daughters boyfriends there's siblings there's there's children 
It's, it's combinational. But if you don't confront the evil, the evil will confront you. If you don't confront the issue, the issue will confront you. And good people get tired of evil. The Bible says bad um, company corrupts good character. You better believe it. If you're around people that are just whinging, whining, complaining, trying to undermine what you're trying to do in your relationship, which is none of their business, and just generally wrecking everything for you while they're trying to produce something themselves, and you don't confront it, you, your character will decline. You will lose your character. And people will notice that. Because bad company corrupts good character. And if you're working on your character all the time, you don't want people corrupting your character. See, you can use these, if you're on the end of this sort of evil, you can use it to help yourself build um, uh, stronger against it. But that ain't necessarily going to fix it, is it? You can have an enemy come towards you and have an atomic bomb there. And all you have to do is press the button. But that ain't changing anything, is it? Because you can't just block people out. That's not going to fix the little tribal disputes that people have. Um, and so many people might say, well, why are you so worried about it? Blah, blah, blah. Because it's unhealthy and it's not good. If Why can't we just have peaceful lives might be the question. Why does alcohol and drugs and gambling and all this other stuff have to ruin great opportunity for people's lives? Why do interferers and complainers and backbiters and people with attitudes have to wreck wonderful relationships? Nine times out of ten, it's not the two people in the relationship. It's circumstances surrounding it. It could be debt. It could be a bad decision. It could be not communicating properly. It could be uh, multitudes of things. But unless the evil is confronted for what it is, everybody loses. It's just the way it works. People will tolerate evil for so long. And then there's a point where evil's not to be tolerated at all. It's just the way it is. So I hope you, this helps you in some way to understand that inside all of us, be it male, female, there is a bend towards not resolving the issue. There is a bend towards trying to make everyone happy. But bad company corrupts good character. You cannot mix good with evil. evil. Either good will overcome evil or evil will overcome good or you just leave the evil and get on with your good. Okay, You say, but I love these people. Well, love those people. It doesn't mean they're not evil. Evil is always um, an illegitimate attack or attitude towards somebody that is not deserving of that effect. And it's unfortunate and it happens every day. There's people you just need to cut off. There's people you just need to get rid of. There's people you just need to move away from. They're not solving anything. They're not fixing anything. You're a commodity. They say they love you, this, that and all that, but their actions speak louder than words at the end of the day. If there's evil and it's not being resolved and they're dancing around it and you're being separated for one reason or another because of it, then you choose the evil or you choose the good. Doesn't mean you're bad. You've got to get rid of the evil because it's everywhere. And some people don't even know they've got it, just like the writer in Romans chapter 7 said, I just wish I could do good, but I don't. I go and do the opposite. And sometimes when we say to somebody, I really need you to, to deal with this, it can make them worse. It can put them in a situation where it's just, they're unable to and it makes them worse. 
And the next thing you know, they're with somebody else or they just haven't fixed it and you give in. It's a no-win situation. I hope this makes sense. But you're listening to Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist on the ProBrick exclusive YouTube channel. Please subscribe, ring the bell, like, share and comment on this video. And I'll catch you on the next one.